Why, hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. Yes, I've done this before. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Um, I just uh, uh, was, uh, I, I actually didn't experience much of your vi uh, movies uh, in my life. We were be behind the Iron Curtain, so there wasn't much. But uh, retrospectively, I watched your movies and um, I noticed something very uh, non-human in you. And I wonder if it was angelic or it was an alien. Well, first of all, most of my movies were silly. <laughs> uh huh. But yes, there was other. There was an alien present. And how about Angelics? Are you an angel? No, I'm not. Oh. But I do have. I did have contact with aliens. That's how I was able to get to the president. To get what? Get in contact with John F. Kennedy. Oh, you get in contact through the aliens? Well, he was interested in me anyway, but it was never going to happen that we got together, except the aliens did arrange it. I had information for him from them, and that is one of the reasons why I was killed. Uh, what, how did you get in contact with them, with the aliens? How did I get in contact with the aliens? Yes. Uh -huh. You got in contact with me, dear. I did not get in contact with them. They, they are the ones that came to me. And at first, I did not know who was talking to me. They were in human form. Uh-huh. And they spoke to me about some things. And they said that I had a mission. And I didn't understand what that meant at that time. Um, but they started to connect me with my stardom, my fame. The way that things happened were just so uh, unbelievable. So I knew that they were working in, on my behalf. So when they came to me again, I listened more carefully. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What kind of aliens were these? They would not tell me. They just said that they were from the stars. Do you know now which, which aliens were these? Yes, I do. It was, Are you allowed to share? Yes. It was you heal individuals. But Did it was... Still but they were working with the Pleiadians from several different planets as well. But you Yils were easier to disguise as humans. The Pleiadians were not as easy to disguise. So that's why they were sent. So do they look human? Absolutely. More human than humans? Not more human. But they tried to make themselves very average looking so that they would not draw attention. However, when looking into their eyes, there was a particular gaze that they had, which was definitely not very human. And uh, how did they sh uh, show up? How did they appear for the first time? Well, the first time, um, one of them asked for my uh, autograph. They had seen me do a performance. This was before I was very famous, but still working in show business. Um, they had asked for my autograph and then asked if they could uh, just sit and talk. I was at a restaurant, but I was sitting with a couple other fellows and, uh, and some people that I knew, and I thought, inclined to invite them to sit down and there was two of them and they they acted very much in awe of my my performances and they actually talked to the people at the table as well but that is how i met them the first time and then um 
a message came into my brain while I was sitting there that I must invite them uh, somewhere to talk. And so I was, I got that message two or three times while I was sitting with them. And I was, that was very curious to me because at that point I didn't even know their names. So, but it, in my head it was saying, we need to talk to you. You need to invite us somewhere to talk. You need, and I'm going, I didn't say anything, of course, because it sounded crazy. So I, after um, we had some laughs and some conversation, I said, would you like to join me at uh, the next place I'm going? And they said, sure, and they followed me to another um, a, a, ca a coffee shop, and we had some coffee. Of course, they didn't drink much coffee. They sipped it a couple times, but I could tell they didn't like it. So <laughs> anyway, they, that's when we had our first meeting. And when did, you, when did they disclose that they are um... Aliens? At first, they did not. They just said that we represent uh, a higher place and that we are from the stars. Uh, uh, and I'm I didn't understand that to be alien. Because you understand, when someone said stars to me, I think of, uh, of you know, great stars, uh, movie stars. So I didn't think of anything but movie stars, that they are from the movie stars. So <laughs> I was thinking that they were talking that some other uh, actors or actresses sent them. Um, and, but the message was very unusual. It said that we want to give you some information, which I cannot repeat, of course, and and we want you to give it to the president. But you will not be able to give him this information for two and a half years or whatever it was. Or several years. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I said, well, why are you giving it to me now? They go, well, we'll be visiting again. The information will uh, change and we will have to we will have to talk to you at least one more time. But I, I actually had several meetings with them, at least four. So when did you realize that they are actual aliens? About on the third visit, when, they, when I looked directly into one of their eyes and he was, he just didn't look human to me anymore. And I said, I start. I was startled, and I said to him, "You're not from the movie stars. You're from you're from outside of Earth, aren't you?" And they said, "Yes, we are. We already told you that." And they and but I was shocked because I had not understood. I am not a dumb girl, but I did not understand of what they were talking. It just seemed too far-fetched. I see. Um, so um, why is it a secret of what was the message? Is it still a secret? Yes. I um, would because it is something that will help mankind. And if I told you, they would probably kill you. Oh, gosh. Oh, really? That's Is it still what... a secret? I, I thought well, that most, killed... most of the secrets were revealed already. They killed John F. Kennedy and they killed me. But that was like uh, 62 and 63 and now it's 18. So we have... Uh... It still is a very important thing that I keep. I, I would promise that I would never tell it and I will not break that word. All right, all right. Um, 
Okay. Um, so what other question there, do you have? there is no connection. There is no connection with the angels. I I have a belief in angels, and I see them now. But at when I was on Earth, I prayed to God and the angels, but I never saw one. At least I don't think so. And you are not uh, genetically, you were not genetically uh, of an angel line, bloodline, no? No, but I did have, according to my friends, a lot of hybridization within me. What kind of hybridization that was that? Pleiadian, Yu-Yil, Fendorian. I didn't even know what Fendorian was. I didn't know what any of them was. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But they were telling me that I had these different things within me, and, I, and they proved it to me by letting me feel each thing that they spoke of. And I could feel it very well. I see. Um, I noticed that um, uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and you, like, you lost your parents very early. Yes. And, and uh, somehow all three of you like, made a huge impact on the humanity in about the same era, maybe you earlier and them later. Why is that? What is the connection? Between me, Paul, and John? No, because, no, between, uh, Oh, that would be another question. Yeah, how about this question too? And then I will ask the second question. Well, I didn't know them really, but the, the reason why there was such a great impact is people were hungry for something new. People were hungry for something better. They were, be, they were given a lot of things that were very mediocre at that time. And middle class was very, very mediocre. And so they were looking for to become greater, to become uh, more alive. During that period of time in the early 60s, life was very mundane in many senses. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, uh-huh. And so we came along and spiced it up a little bit. And that is something the people were really looking for. Uh, but, but why is that uh, you and them were like rose to the top? What, what was different about you? Well, with me, it was because I connected with, with men and women. I, my connection was sexual to men. But it, on the female level, it was very confident. They, they looked at me as a role model to be more confident and themselves because I was very feisty in many ways and I wouldn't let men take advantage of me. And they saw this. And so I related heavily to men and women. Um, yeah, that was I noticed. Um like there was a lot of masculine energy in you can you comment on any of that were you like where from the masculinity comes from i have yes i would say that i had to grow up strong having no parents at an early age brought out the masculine and feminine in me both i was truly a woman but i did have to fight like a man sometimes to get what I needed and what I wanted. And here we come to the first question, which uh, you didn't understand. So the question was uh, that John Lennon lost his mother. It was a huge impact on him. And, and you lost your mother very early and you didn't see much of her. And, and uh, Paul McCartney also lost his, her, his mother very early. How does that help you to, to propel up? I mean, what, what is the connection? What's the metaphysical? Well, very easy. Most people depend on their mothers for all kinds of things and all kinds of answers to questions of life. And when you don't have that source of, of information, that source of unconditional love, most people couldn't go to their fathers at that time because they were taught to be masculine and strong, not to talk 
not to really say I love you or do any of those things, but women were more feminine and were able to bring out all their love, their, the information that anyone wanted. And so without that source of love and information, we had to, to be stronger. I, I was wondering, maybe it was uh, your mother which moved on the other side and helped you from, from the other side, and same with John Lennon? Of course. Of course. The parents, mothers will help you from the other side as well because you never stop thinking about them. And when you know that, when they know you're thinking about them, there will be some help that comes. Absolutely. Also, uh, she was in mental institution much of her uh, later life, and I wonder how uh, how much of that was was in you. Like people, there was like rumors that you were also mentally unstable. I'm not I'm not sure if it was true. I was at certain points very unstable. It is true, but and it it is because I saw that in my mother, and because. I believed it was hereditary, but I did not want to be that way. I saw her, she was in terrible shape. It was awful. And I did not want to become that, but I saw that I did have some of her traits. There was no question that I was my mother's daughter, but I was not insane. And I didn't see her as being insane either but she did have troubles relating to um, some, some forms of reality and some thought processes. She wasn't treated well always by my father and her childhood was not that great. And there was mental illness in her family, my family. Uh, so did that mental illness uh, somehow help you to become the, the, the brightest of movie stars? In some ways it did. Because some people looked at it as brilliant. Whereas it was a little crazy. But at that time, if you were a little crazy and you were a rising star, they looked at you as sort of brilliant. And they gave you a second chance. Uh huh. So yes, I I was uh, surprised how bright were your smiles when you did interviews. Uh, like you know, it's really hard to smile that brightly, especially when the questions are very nasty and unfriendly. So how natural was it, and or was it? Uh, I had was it to because smile. of your craziness, or is it was just an art? No, no. I was told to smile by my agents. They said that there were going to be harsh questions and that I needed to smile because if I showed signs of weakness during these interviews, it would ruin me. And I didn't want to be ruined, of course. And so I followed that advice and it did work. So what is smiles natural? Because it's, it looked very natural. It looked like you really like gave out positive energy. Of course. I loved being who I was. And I knew these questions were trying to destroy me. But I knew that I would overcome it. The, my friends, my alien friends, had already told me that I would not be, not be destroyed by these interviews. So that made me very happy. Just, just remember, also Steve Jobs was, was uh, brought up by not his parents, by foster parents. And you were brought up in, uh, how do you call it, in uh, foster homes. Yeah. Uh, so, so I just uh, wonder how that, that, uh, yeah, if there is uh, any mystical connection between them. I, mean, wow. I understand the practical thing that people become more independent, but maybe there is, because your eyes was like really, really mystical. You were like non-human. You looked non-human, you behaved too happily, you behaved too positively. That was 
um, was that usual? Foster, foster care was very difficult at times, but you see, something in me knew that I would not stay there. Something in me knew that I was beyond that. So that is, I, I think I always knew that. Um, now, the way I mean, uh, the way living living your life, uh, the way like the, you were assassinated, um, was it the time for you to go? Because uh, like you 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 lived, I think you were like, you were thirty six when you were killed in sixty two. So you lived still being very sexy, and this way uh, your image didn't fade. Correct. Was it intentional? No, it wasn't intentional, but it is the way um, that it was supposed to be. It had to be that way. That's all that I can say. I cannot tell you all the reasons why it would take too long, but it was because it was supposed to be. Like I noticed that John Kennedy, uh, JFK, uh, he left... Uh he was assassinated when uh, he was pretty sick, and uh, and from him the way we could could possibly be more more likely down than than to stay on on the on the on the on the top. And yes. for you, for you, um, there was possibly a way to to, to continue as as a, as, a, as an ancient actor, but you would be uh, you would, would not be as uh, as sexy as you were before. I didn't quite understand that, but I do want, so, I want to tell you that I know, I, I know John suffered a great deal with his illness for many years. So he was, it was very sad to me that he had to suffer. And I saw some of that suffering when I was with him. So how short of, I mean, now looking from the other side, how short of it was for you to, to leave? Because uh, they had no choice but to take me out, as they said. No, uh, it was unexpected. I, you're breaking up, and I cannot understand. Sorry, there is technology breaking up. Sorry. Okay, so what I'm saying, uh, you know, when they decided in heaven that you 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 should go, uh, how uh, no, how hard for them was to decide, or was it already in your in your uh, storyline that you have to at that time? It was it was already realized that I would be going. Uh huh. Uh, also, like um, there were symptoms that you were like dysfunctioning in the last maybe year or so, like you were uh, not being able to come to the, uh, to the shooting ground or like hiding in your bathroom. Uh, what was that? There was a lot of pressure on me in the last few years. The government was pressuring me. I was being pressured by the studios and there was a lot of different, uh, there was all kinds of angles being presented. And this was a very difficult time for me because I had to make a lot of decisions in a very short period of time, but I didn't even get a chance to make them all. And so I, my, it did show that I was uh, suffering a little bit of a, a mental breakdown because I was so stressed out. So you were actually like depressed sitting in the bathroom or was it more than that? Well, it was depression, absolutely. And it was that there are moments when I just can't handle the pressure when it's coming from so many ways. I was hoping that you were talking to the alien sitting in the bathroom. But no. you were really like not talking to anyone, right? No, not really, no. Were you going mad there or just depressed? I was telling myself that I needed to get back to business, that I needed to get back to normal, that I needed to stop 
all this uh, whining and crying and uh, become the woman that I have always been. But because right then I was really close to a breakdown. Also, there was a, a rumor that you were addicted to, uh, I think it was barbiturates or some other uh, prescription drugs. I Is did take a lot of prescription drugs. Whether I was addicted, I'm not sure. I did not, not feel any high when I was taking them. They would always just make me feel more normal. And perhaps the addiction was that I was not normal and they made me feel normal, but that is, uh, there were very few times that I ever felt that I was on drugs, but of course, when you're a drug addict, sometimes you don't admit it. And I look back and I see that I probably was uh, using more than I should. Uh, so looking back at the lessons you learned, uh... What would what, what, what you change if you knew, like, um, how it developed? Now, with your wisdom of the, knowing the whole picture, what, what should have been done differently? Nothing. Everything that happened was meant to happen the way it did. I cannot say that I would, if I were to go back, I probably would not do anything differently. I was a very happy individual for the most part. There were sad times and very stressful times, but I don't think that I would change them for anything. Uh-huh. And when you were uh, living, uh, did you see the huge impact you are making on the, on, on, the, on the humanity? I could see in front of me that there was very many happy people, and they wanted to see me, and that is what impacted me the most. Because um, I had heard stories that the people loved them, the people loved them, but then when they went out on stage, there was not the great impact with the people that the re reporters said there was. But when I went out on stage or when I was in public, there was a great joy and happiness there. So I knew that if they were telling me the truth, that... My people loved me. So what's the secret of that mystery? Why uh, your appearance, like even the connection to you on the, on the screen, why it is so magic? Can you explain because that? Because I was, I was someone that everyone wanted to know but could never know. And it was a mystery of who I really was and how, how I could be the way I am. And the thing is, I don't know exactly what it was about me, but there's so many that just were mesmerized by who I was, and that surprised me. It feels like you, you have been a royal in, in the past life. It looks like there was a lot of royalty in you, although you were of uh, unknown background, but uh, you look like a princess and uh, behave there like a princess. Royalty. There was some royalty in my background, but I, I don't want to discuss that now. In fact, I have to go. Do you want the last question? Very well. Um, your image in the, your image in the, in the beginning and early ages, in early in early years, air, in the early in early years was. Uh, uh, very different than it became later. You look like a different person and then you gradually transform in, in your screen, uh, now recognizable uh, screen uh, image. Yeah. How much of art artificial, uh, how much of art was that? And then did you well, kind of grow, grow into that image? Did it become natural well, for you? Remember this, it was a hard beginning. It was very harsh and my outlook toward myself at times was not good because I had done some things that I was not proud of at when I was young. But I saw that there was a future, that there was a positive future, and I had to wake up. And in fact, someone had talked to me and said to me, you know, 
you have a lot of potential, but you're never going to, you're never going to reach it with this kind of uh, activities and this kind of attitudes toward the past. You're going to have to forget the past. You're going to have to recreate yourself and, and be a better person. And, and I told them to go uh, shove off, but I didn't use those words. Um, but I thought about that and I, I realized they were absolutely right. I, I couldn't live in that past anymore. And so I gradually started to change myself. And I started to make myself look better. And I started to act like I was happier and better. But I felt uh, there were some places where the happiness was just coming to me. And I didn't know why, because I was feeling that I was doing what I should be doing. And that I think was the most exciting thing for me is I felt that I was on the right path. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that was a wonderful interview. And um, I hope to speak to you once more. I'm sure there will be more questions. Have a good day. Have a good day. Hello. Hey, Jim. Thank you for uh, the interview for the session. Oh. Already, I'm going to go take my shower now, and I will talk to my next client in 45 minutes.